The Drug Price Competition and Patent Term Restoration Act of 1984, also known as the Hatch-Waxman Act, amended patent law and drug law to facilitate pharmaceutical development and encourage greater access to generic medicines. Under Hatch-Waxman, the Food and Drug Administration requires new drug applications to be accompanied by certain patent information, which the FDA then lists in its Approved Drug Products with Therapeutic Equivalence Evaluations publication, also known as the Orange Book. Deciding what patent information to submit can be a complicated process for pharmaceutical companies with significant implications. Finnegan attorney Shana Sear, David Weingarten, and Ashley Winkler join us now to share what pharmaceutical companies should know about the complex Orange Book listing process. Shana, what is the most significant benefit of having a patent listed in the Orange Book? Having a patent listed in the Orange Book means that any company seeking to market a generic version of the drug must certify as to that patent. For example, they can certify that the listed patent has or will expire before the generic drug is marketed. They can also certify that the patent is invalid or will not be infringed by the manufacturer use or sale of the generic drug. And this one is known as a Paragraph 4 certification. Now, filing a generic drug application with a Paragraph 4 certification is an act of patent infringement such that the patent owner can sue before the generic drug product is even marketed. If the patent owner sues within 45 days of receiving notice of a Paragraph 4 certification, it will trigger a stay where the FDA will not approve the generic drug application for a period of generally 30 months. The ability to sue a generic drug applicant before the generic drug is marketed and the resulting stay of approval protects the patent owner from harm that could otherwise result if the FDA approved an infringing drug product. That is a significant benefit of having patents listed in the Orange Book. David, what patent information should pharmaceutical companies submit to the FDA for listing in the Orange Book and when? According to the FDA regulations, Pharmaceutical companies must submit information for drug substance patents, drug product patents, and method of use patents. As to what specific patent information must be submitted, by statute, pharmaceutical companies must submit with its application the patent number and expiration date of any patent which claims the drug, which is construed by the FDA as meaning drug product, for which the applicant submitted the application or which claims a method of using such drug with respect to which a claim of patent infringement could reasonably be asserted if a person not licensed by the owner engaged in manufacture, use, or sale of the drug. Additionally, when a patent issues after the new drug application has already been filed, but before it is approved, the applicant is required to amend the application to include information regarding the newly issued patent. And similarly, if a patent issues after the new drug application is approved, the applicant must file the patent information and must do so within 30 days of patent issuance to be considered timely filed. Ashley, let's look more into these three types of patents that should be submitted. First, what types of patents are considered drug substance patents? The drug substance is the active ingredient. Thus, drug substance patents include patents that claim the active ingredient in the pending or approved new drug application. Drug substance patents also include patents that claim a drug substance that is the same as the active ingredient. A drug substance that might be the same as the active ingredient if it can be expected to perform the same with respect to such characteristics as dissolution, solubility, and bioavailability. For patents that claim only a polymorph that is the same as the active ingredient, there is a specific requirement that the applicant certify through a particular FDA declaration form that the applicant has test data demonstrating that a drug product containing the polymorph will perform the same as the drug product described in the NDA. Shana, what is meant by drug product patents? Drug product patents include patents that claim the drug product described in the pending or approved new drug application. The drug product is the finished dosage forms such as the tablet, capsule, or solution. It contains the drug substance and possibly one or more inactive ingredients. The FDA has indicated that drug product patents for listing in the Orange Book include patents for metered aerosols, capsules, metered sprays, gels, and pre-filled drug delivery systems. So information for those patents should be submitted as well. David, what types of patents are considered method of use patents? 
Method of use patents include those that claim indications or other conditions of use for which approval was sought or has been granted in the new drug application. Unlike drug substance and drug product patents, for method of use patents, the FDA listing regulations additionally require that the applicant separately identify each pending or approved method of use and related patent claim. And if the method of use claimed by the patent does not cover an indication or other approved condition of use in its entirety, the applicant must describe only the specific approved method of use claimed by the patent for which a claim of patent infringement could reasonably be asserted. Ashley, what patent information should not be submitted to the FDA for listing in the Orange Book? The FDA regulations indicate that information should not be submitted for process patents, patents claiming packaging, patents claiming metabolites, and patents claiming intermediates. Additionally, the FDA has instructed that applicants or NDA holders should not submit information on patents that claim only unapproved uses of a drug. Shana, let's look into these four types of patents that shouldn't be submitted. First, what is meant by process patents? Process patents include patents that claim methods for making or chemically synthesizing the drug. According to the FDA, information for process patents should not be submitted because these patents do not claim the drug. The FDA has indicated, however, that product-by-process patents, which do claim the drug product by describing or listing process steps, should be submitted for listing in the Orange Book. David, what types of patents are considered packaging patents? Packaging patents include those patents that claim a drug product's packaging or container. And even though information regarding a drug's packaging or container is part of the new drug application, as mentioned earlier, the FDA has instructed that packaging patents should not be submitted. The FDA has explained that the drug's packaging is distinct from the approved drug product and thus falls outside of the requirements for patent submission. Note, however, that the FDA distinguishes packaging patents from patents on drug delivery systems, such as metered aerosols, capsules, metered sprays, as Shana mentioned earlier. FDA considers drug delivery systems to be drug products, and therefore information for patents covering them should be submitted. Ashley, what types of patents are considered metabolite patents? Metabolite patents include those that claim the chemical compound formed from the active ingredient of a drug after being broken down by the body. While the FDA instructs not to submit information for patents claiming a metabolite, the FDA has indicated that information should be submitted for patents claiming an approved method of using an approved drug to administer a metabolite. Shana, what is meant by intermediate patents? Intermediate patents include patents that claim materials that are produced during preparation of the active ingredient and are not present in the finished drug product. The FDA considers intermediates as in-process materials rather than drug substances or components in the finished drug product and therefore instructs new drug applicants not to submit information for intermediate patents. David, what are some potential consequences of not timely submitting patent information? Notably, the FDA will list patents in the Orange Book whose information was not timely submitted. However, patent certifications in this circumstance are governed by the statutory and regulatory provisions regarding untimely filed patent information. These provisions state, if a patent is not timely submitted, but is listed before the generic application is filed, then the generic applicant must nonetheless certify as to the patent, and such certification could lead to the 30-month stay we mentioned earlier. If, on the other hand, the untimely submitted patent is listed after the generic drug application is filed, then the generic drug applicant does not need to certify as to the patent. A generic drug applicant may voluntarily certify as to an untimely filed patent, but according to the FDA regulations, They may also withdraw the patent certification for an untimely filed patent, at which point the application will no longer be considered to contain the prior certification. Ashley, does the FDA confirm that patent information is correct before listing it in the Orange Book? No, it does not. The FDA has taken the position that it will not substantively review the correctness of patent information before publishing. The FDA interprets its role in listing patent information as purely ministerial, and has explained that it lacks both the resources and the expertise to police the correctness of every patent listing submitted by an NDA holder. The FDA regulations do, however, provide for administrative proceedings 
if someone challenges the information listed in the Orange Book. And finally, Shana, what are some potential consequences for improperly listing patent information in the Orange Book? Well, in addition to the possible administrative proceedings that Ashley mentioned, an alleged improper listing could be subject to a counterclaim in district court litigation, it could lead to antitrust allegations, or even give rise to penalties for perjury. So first, if a patent owner brings an infringement suit against a generic drug applicant, the applicant may respond by asserting a counterclaim seeking to have the patent information corrected or even deleted. Second, antitrust violations have been alleged in various instances on the basis that the Orange Book contained incorrect patent information. Importantly, though, courts have not found antitrust violations where the patent information was reasonably submitted. And third, a new drug applicant must verify under penalty of perjury that the submitted patent information is true and correct. The FDA instructs that this requirement serves as a warning to alert applicants that making a willfully and knowingly false statement is a criminal offense. Our guests have been Shanna Sear, David Weingarten, and Ashley Winkler, attorneys at Finnegan, one of the largest IP law firms in the world. For more commentary on intellectual property news and issues, to listen to other podcasts, and to receive additional information on the firm, please visit www.finnegan.com. Thank you for listening to this podcast from Finnegan.